So uh, let's go through the pivot table. So pivot table makes it simple to evaluate large information sets and it allows us to focus on certain data with certain conditions. And to generate pivot table, so I have downloaded this Excel spreadsheet from WHO website. It's about COVID data. These are my titles. So I'll, I, this is my general practice. I always bold my titles and you can go to view, go to free span, freeze top row. So basically this will freeze your first row. And after that, you can scroll down to see what is this data is saying to you. So before starting, start like before start doing any data analysis, I always suggest everyone to just go through the data and try to understand what is this data is saying. So here, what I'm seeing is, Regions are defined by MRO, country Afghanistan, new cases 26, cumulative cases, new deaths, cumulative deaths. And I see a lot of dates here. So the uh, meaning of this data set is I, I can verify what happened in Afghanistan month over month. Oh, sorry, let me share my Excel. Okay. So, okay. So whenever you start with the new data analysis, I would suggest you to bold the titles. After that, add filters. So I have already added those filters here. So you can so I'll remove the filters, go to home, click on short and filters and add filters. This will help us to, uh, to play with this data or manipulate this data. Next step is go to view. You see this freeze pen, click on freeze top, top row. And you will see that everything, my one first row is as it is. I can change the below, below rows and uh, I kept this freeze because I would like to see what is this number, what is this and other this numbers because after a certain time you keep forgetting the titles of your data. So are we good here so far? Do you have any questions, concerns? Oh, keep going. Okay. So to create a pivot table, click in this small triangle, go to uh, insert, click on pivot table. Now, this will select a certain range, A to H. So if you want to do it in new worksheet, do it in new worksheet. If you want to do it in an existing worksheet, you can click on existing worksheet and start somewhere from the blank area. However, it's always advisable to start with the new worksheet and hit OK. So now you have here opportunity to select different fields uh, from the pivot table. Now, uh, if your, let's say manager asks, you are working at WHO and manager asks like, uh, give me country-wise report, month over month infection uh, death reports. So what you can, what you should do is, so month over month, you can get it from date. So click here and you see a year, quarter date reported. And you will see here a lot of different fields. So you see quarter, months, and you will see before 20, uh, January 2020 and then after January 20, uh, 2020 and 2021. 
So you will see this here once you click on this. Now, I would like to see only month over month. I don't want to see every quarter. So remove this field, keep year, and I don't want to see dates. So remove this field. So now you have only years. Sorry, that's my bad. So remove this date reported, remove field. I want to keep it just for the quarter. And then if you want to see the dates uh, month, then you can see, click on the community of dates here. Sorry, that's that. So you can see it by month and as well as by date. Now I just want to see what's the uh, summation of total debts, new debts. So click this thing. Click, you can click either on this small box. It will go here. It says sum of new debts. That's what I wanted to see. But this looks pretty odd. Like I do not, I need to calculate how many numbers are there. And then I can say this in quarter two, 2021, 2020, it was 491,000 people died uh, due to COVID. So what you should do is click on the options, field options, go to view field settings, go to number format, number, use separator at every thousand, click okay, click okay. So now you can see easy, easy readable that. So far it's 4 million and 66, 666,000 people died due to COVID. Now, there are two ways you can do it. As a manager, if someone asks you like, hey, I would like to see the number, this is all good. I'm okay with the quarter numbers, but what are the numbers based on the different countries? So you can do two things. Either you can drag and drop countries and their rows, and you will see a lot of countries. So in Afghanistan, Q, in four people died. In Albania, 12 people died. Or in Brazil, 136 people died. Or in, let's say, Italy, 11,000 people died. But this is too long list. So you can do one way like that. Or you can remove this country from here and move it to the columns. So now you have numbers, everything by column. So let's pick a specific country here. I just want to see about what happened in Lebanon. Click OK. And then Lebanon and this. Now I want to see something between a couple of countries. Let's say I'll pick Lebanon, then Grundy, Sorry, I'm just picking uh, random country names. Uh, let's say Germany, Ghana, France. Hit OK. And here you can compare everything Apple to Apple, what happened in each and every quarter. So you can see that in Q2 2020, France has the highest casualty. However, you can see that in quarter one, 2021, Germany has the highest casualty. So this is, you can compare in pivot table, apple to apple. So the advantage of pivot table is you don't need to go to whole data line by line and understand what is happening with the data. So pivot table gives us an idea to focus on certain set of data and analyze those data for like a meaningful conversation with your team or with your, with your manager or with your different stakeholder. Now the next trick is something that I learned in a different, in a, by accident. So you can click anywhere, click anywhere in pivot table, go to insert. See this slicer, click on slicer. And now you can, let's just select country. Uh, I would like to select WHO region. And uh, let's say years. Hit OK. So now you have a button filters to manipulate this data. 
So remember, we have selected a couple of countries. Now I'll clear everything. Now the whole pivot table here. And let's say I want to see what happened in European countries. Click on Europe. And want to like to see what happened in 2021. Click on 2021 and you can see what is the in fact, uh, casualty in Europe. And this is WHO data. So you may see a lot of countries who have reported their number to WHO. Uh, let's say I'm more interested to, and I always keep this slices when I create my own data analysis report. So, and I also explain this to my stakeholder that I have created slices. So you can manipulate this data just by clicking here. Uh, let's say I would like to see something on uh, Afro. I am assuming it's African countries. Yes. And now I want to be specific to certain countries. Let's say South Africa. Uh, mother is Mali, Madagascar. So see. If I'm clicking one by one, it's just like showing me here only one country. So hold control, click the, con click the countries that you are looking for. Hit OK. You don't need to hit OK, sorry. As soon as you release control and clicking, you'll see all the countries here. And click on the year that you would like to see. Let's say only 2020. So you can see this country, Madagascar, Mali, uh, uh, Namibia, Sao Tomo, South Sudan, Togo. And you can compare what happened to this country because of COVID in different quarter. So in say, let's in line eight in Q3, if you're asked like, hey, which country was the uh, best at the death rate? So you can say uh, Sao Tom Tome was the best country. And which country had the worst Q4? You can easily say that Mali has the worst Q4 among all these five countries. So this is pivot table and you can play with this pivot table using WHO regions, country code, cumulative cases and so on. So it depends on what question is, what is the question asked based from the data. Your manager can ask you from the data that, hey, uh, can you let me know what is the, uh, let's say others. Yeah. What are the countries under other WHO region? So that you can do here. WHO region, click on other, and you can see there are no countries defined as other. Other is other. So that means that this 13 that are not accountable for any country. Maybe that is something someone died because of not having their, and died and because their paperwork were, was not with them. So they, the whoever the country, they were not able to recognize the person who died in this Q1 and Q2. So you can ex. There And you can always Google that, hey, I found uh, in WHO data, there are like 13 that in the others, what can be the reason? So you can read the reasons on Google. So it all, all depends on the question you are trying to solve. And based on that, you can select the slices or based on the data, based on that, you can select the data and answer your questions. Any question for the pivot table? to repeat this process again please sorry the process can you repeat it again please if it's possible uh i guess this one is uh, this is being recorded so would is it possible to for you to view the recorded session okay yeah and I, and I think uh, the recording will be fine because of time right because you still want to do some other stuff exactly yeah because i want to do uh, the other functions and if time permits, like if I have extra time, then I'll touch base pivot table again. Okay, thank you. 
no problem. Yep, I'll, I'll keep this thing in my yeah. mind. And, and give you my suggest, uh, Jay, uh, if you can, uh, the next one you're going to do, if you mm -hmm. can uh, take some time to just kind of explain what is going on. Uh, because sometimes when we're working in Excel, if you are very good at it, um, well, you probably will know what you are doing. But for somebody who hasn't really been very familiar with it, especially these pivot functions, uh, I could just be fleeting, right? And then you'd be like, okay, what happened? What happened? And so if you can slow down a little bit. Okay, no problem. Yep, I can slow down. Oh, so, so far I haven't used any uh, keyboard shortcut or any other keyboard function. Everything, whatever I have used is from the uh, Excel uh, uh, this menu option. So next function is the if function. So if allows you to uh, make a logical comparison to produce an outcome based on specific condition. Uh, for example, if something is equal to something, then I want to write uh, supply chain. And if something is equal is not equal to something, then I don't want to. I want to write finance. So this kind of so if this condition is fulfilled, then in that cell, that cell of the Excel, it will automatically say supply chain. And if that condition is wrong, that cell of the Excel will automatic will say as a finance word will display. I'll, I'll show you how it how it is done. And this function allows for the two possible outcome, one based on the condition being met, that is true condition, and one based on the condition not being met, that is false condition. So uh, let's say if I want to say that <clears throat> uh, column I is the uh, testing column. So let me paint it with some other color. And I will give a title of if function. Now, the question is, uh, how many new cases are converted into new death? So if I get new one case, did that person die? Or that person cured? So if I see here, I don't know either whether it's a good example or not. Okay, I don't think so. it's a good example. Sorry. Hmm. Okay, let's see if I want to write uh, new deaths. I would like to say, want to see that what happened to this row? how many people died. If there's a number more than one, then I would like to see here uh, deaths. And if it is number zero, then I would like to write here as uh, happy. Just hypothetical example. So click on this cell, go to this area. This is where you type your equation, hit equal. Now, press I, F. So you can see here, Excel will give you three or four options to select. So if you see, don't click anywhere, just see if it says, check whether a condition is met and return one value if true and another value if false. So just click on if. So now here you can see the, uh, structure of the equation, what kind of structure that Excel wants you to write. And by clicking here, so this is logical test. There used to be a pop-up, I'm not sure why it's not coming, but anyways, like, so first step is the define the logical step. So what I'm saying that if I see death more than one, then I would like to write a word dead, deaths, and if it is, zero or equal to zero, then I would like to write as an happy. So this is my condition check, logical test point. Now, if this is greater than zero, sorry, 
greater than zero. So this is my test. So every time Excel reads this cell, it will test that, hey, G2, if it is greater than zero, so it says, yes, it is greater than zero. So value is true. So I want to write. So whenever you write a word in if, you need to write it in between two inverted comma. So you can write that's And let's say if this value is false, let's say it's here one value is false. It's greater than zero. Uh, sorry, uh, let's say logical test says that, hey, this G2 is zero or minus one or minus two, then value is false. That means no infection, no new deaths. So value is false. I would like to write happy. Close the bracket and hit enter. So now you see that because it's zero, it says happy. But let's say I see in Afghanistan on uh, January 3rd, one that happened. Now you can see it just converted into deaths. Another, another way you can use this if function is, mm -hmm. let's say you want to remove deaths and happy and just want to write some equation. If, if someone, die, someone, someone died on that day from that country, it should write name of that country. So, so not sorry, name of that country. It should write country code. So you can select AF. If nobody died, it should write zero. So you can add zero under value if false. So if you need to enter a number or a reference cells from the uh, Excel database, you don't need to write into inverted comma. Close the bracket, hit enter. Because it was it is zero that it is giving us zero. So we are in the false fun, false area, false, false, uh, how would I say, uh, number because this test failed. Now, if I click write a number, let's say 50. So now this number 50 is giving us these two answer that it is greater than zero. So we are telling Excel to go to the cell B2. That means that it will type as AF country code. So with if function, you can either write a word or you can give in some equation as well. Let's say you want to give, whenever the condition is true, it should write 10 plus one, 11. So when you hit enter, you see it changed because you given gave a equation here for the true condition. You can select this country whole word as well. If it is true, then word Afghanistan will come up. If it is false, then you can remove zero and select WHO region. So whenever it's zero, you can say it's MRO, EMRO. And whenever this condition is false, which is like greater than zero, then it should say the name of that country. So this is if function. Are we, are we okay? Do you have any questions for the if, if uh, function? I guess, um, will there be any typical scenario in uh, maybe supply chain analysis where you would use this application? Yes, sure. So let's say if I convert this into, mm, <clears throat> let's say instead of country, 
you say uh, if you're working in Walmart, you say uh, a store, Walmart store in York region of Toronto. And here you see uh, product details. So let's say a simple product, Oreo pack, uh, like Oreo biscuit pack. And number of inventory in warehouse, as in like store back room, number of Oreo biscuits on store, in store, and number of Oreo biscuits are in transit from uh, a centralized distribution center in Ontario. So you will write a condition that if number of Oreo biscuits is less than, let's say 10, when it goes to 10 in the store shelf, you should get an, uh, that visibility that, hey, on in store, your Oreo biscuits are less. So let me do it here on uh, another spreadsheet. So store name. Let's say uh, York Walmart. Uh, product name. I just like cookies. I don't know spelling of Oreos. And let's say uh, on shelf, I have right now 50. Uh, in back room, so back room is the small storage area of that store. Back room, I have 100. Uh, in transit, I have, let's say, 500. Now, uh, allowable, so safety stock. This is or whatever I want to keep on shelf should not go below my safety stock on shelf. So let's say my safety stock is 10. Now imagine if you have 20,000 lines and if your task is to figure it out how many products are below safety stock. So in this case, let's say I would say that I will give a title as a check SS levels. So that is check safety stock levels. So click here, click equal, if. Now logical test, I want to see that on shelf whether it's greater than safety stock or less than safety stock. So on self is the my logical test part one. So I'll select that. Now I uh, want to check whether it's greater than safety stock or not. So greater than in safety stock F2, click on that. Now, if it is greater than uh, safety stock, I would write to write uh, do not bring more. And if it is less than safety stock, need more of this product from back room into inverted comma close the condition, hit enter. So here you see that it says, hey Excel, safety stock is 10. You have 50 on hand. So do not bring more. So you do not talk to your backroom people to get more. Now let's say someone like me who is like big fan of chocolate cookies came in the store, bought almost 45 out of from shelf. So that is 50 and I'm reducing 45. So now on shelf, I have only five. 
So that gives me a message immediately, need more of this product from backroom. Now let's say you have 339 lines and, and I'm just doing a, like a different numbers here, five, 10, 200, 3,200. 586 and backroom has a 0, 50, 100, 200, uh, 5,000. And let's say we don't need to worry about in transit right now. Safety stock is five. Your Walmart uh, safety stock is, let's say again, five. This one has safety stock of 250. This one has safety stock of, let's say, 1,000 only. This one has safety stock of 600. So with Excel, another thing you can do is you don't need to type this equation again and again for 300 times. Just go here, select that cell, copy it, click on the cell that you would like to copy that whole formula and paste it. So you see that here we have C2 as a reference and you have C1 and F7 as a reference. So basically Excel copies all the formula plus the references that you, that you use for the logical test. And it also checks everything for line seven. So here I have 586 on hand on shelf. However, my safety stock is 600. So the if function is telling you, hey, Excel, for the line seven product, you need to bring more. Let's say I brought something from back room. So from 5,000, I did, I removed like, I moved 500 to on shelf. So my new value in back room is 4,500. And my new value on shelf is, 1086. As soon as you get the new, new product on shelf, it goes beyond above your safety stock. So it gives you an indication, do not bring more. So this is one of the uh, scenario that you do as a supply chain buyer or procurement specialist or inventory specialist where you you are told to see uh, what is the inventory levels and which products needs, needs to buy more and bring on shelf, whether you are in retail or supply chain or any other supply chain uh, industries such as uh, oil and gas or transportation or logistics. So sometimes it can be safety stock, sometimes it can be what's the comparison between on shelf versus back room. Sometimes it's is the comparison if it the product on shelf hits zero, you should get a notification, bring more products from back room. So same condition, you can do it here. That if this number is less than one, do not bring more, need more, this product from back room. So right now, oops, sorry. So right now it's more than one and safety stock is 10, but I'm not worried about safety stock. I just worried about it should not hit zero. So five, do not bring more. Four, do not bring more. Three, do not bring more. Two, do not bring more. One, so I get a notification before someone buys it, we need to replenish the stock on safe, on shelf. So now you have one, let's say you went to zero, it still says no more, need more about this product from back room. And let's say I bought some something from back room, I have now 50 on shelf, back room has 50. You can add one more condition here that if back room stock goes to zero, get more from in transit or get more from centralized distribution center. So this type of scenario do uh, you check inventory and use if function as a supply chain specialist.
Okay, sounds Any... good. Yeah. Okay. I think I think that that definitely brings it to uh to more relevance for anyone who haven't uh, seen how to use this. Uh, this is if function, right? Yes, this is if function. Okay. Do any any question with if function? I believe everybody is good. Yeah. Okay. Next, we'll go to relative reference cells. So relative reference cells is, is produced by default with Excel. And it changed their value when moved relative to the changes in row and columns. So for instance, if, if you select a formula, cell uh, B2 plus B3, and you copy that cell to the next row, or let's say after a couple of row, it, let's say on seventh row, the formula will become uh, B7 plus C7. So relative reference is particularly useful whenever you have the same calculation has to be repeated across multiple rows or column. So I'll show you that demo here. Let's say uh, you have this numbers here as an inventory in your store. And this if equation, I would like to test on all the data sets, all the products which I have in store. So you can, there are two ways to do the relative uh, references. Copy, control C, or copy here. Go to the lines that you would like to copy this calculation, select all the lines, click on paste. paste. So now in this one, you can see C2 because it's a second line. You will see here C3, C4, here it changes. C5, C6. Now I'll copy it to multiple lines. So now let's say line 20. If you click here, you can see the whole equation is now referenced to C20. So this is, this is the beauty of a reference formula where you can copy this formula either this side, all the columns, or in the rows so that you don't need to type that formula again and again to see the calculation. And let's say once you have this scenario, you can select the data on this small triangle by clicking on the small triangle, go to here, go to filter. And now if your boss says that, hey, just give me the list of products which I need, which I do not need to bring from the store. So easy peasy, you have all the equations here, you satisfied all the conditions, you have number, click on this filter, click on do not bring more, hit okay. You can copy paste this table in an email and saying that your boss that, hey, we need this product number two, product number three, product number five and product number six, we do not need, sorry. So rest of the product keep coming from the back room. Or your boss can ask like, hey, uh, can you send me the list of product that we need to from back room? You can go to this filter, unselect do not bring more, select need more of this product and hit okay. You can say, hey boss, we need product number four, seven, 229 to maintain so-and-so safety stock, which is mentioned in your system. So with this if condition and uh, relative references cells and like this formal adding this filter is something that I do it uh, a cherry on top of my frosting. You can focus more on the data that you are you want to take in action or you want someone to take an action. So that is relative reference cell. Uh, you can do the same thing with columns as well. I'm copying it into column Q and you see that M4. So it also keeps in mind the distance from the relative, the uh, logical test cell. 
So you, in this one, you can see C4, it's FAR 3 cell. And in this one, you can see it's M4. So it's again FAR from the reference cell, three cells. So if you have a, like a big data from first row to last row, then you need to copy equation from row wise. If you have data more in the columns, like first column to the last column, then need to copy paste this equation horizontally, like one by one, like you can select multiple columns and paste this equation. Uh, do you have any question with relative reference cells? Um, my, it's not a question, Pastor. Just want to, um, at the end of this, we are getting the video, right? Um, the ex, these Excel sheets that we are using for this demonstration, are we getting that as well in addition to the video? So that we can practice this on our own. Uh, sorry, I'm not able to hear you. So that is, is anybody hearing me properly? Your voice yeah, is it's like better uh, now. It's better now, yeah. Yeah, it's better now because <laughs> okay, it's yeah. So I'm too much modulation. The Excel, the Excel sheet, this Excel sheet we are using, this particular data you mm -hmm. downloaded. Are we going to get the, this the, the distributed as well for us to be able to practice these um these functions in addition to the video? No, I have downloaded the public data. Yeah. Because it's difficult to get any company's uh, supply chain related data and it's confidential as well. So you can yeah. practice this thing with any, any of the public data. So what I did is. I, I actually have one um, supply chain related data um, that I can share, but uh, I guess what I uh, you is saying there is if, uh, you know, you can share this Excel sheet with, uh, with us as well so that they can uh, kind of practice it on their own. Sure, I can share this uh, Excel sheet with you, no problem. All right, thank you. Uh, how do I share it in Zoom? Oh, I found it, sorry. Uh, you can actually share it after, uh, maybe just, just upload it on, uh, on the WhatsApp and I will put it on Slack. Oh, I'll, I'll do it right away. Okay. So anybody wants to do it right away, like right now with me, we can do it, but I don't have uh, the supply chain numbers. So that's why I'm using a public data to explain this thing. I can see, if, yeah, I can yeah. see if I, I can actually get an, uh, one Excel sheet, which is uh, supply and basically procurement actually. So I can share that. And uh, if they do wish to practice with that one, that's okay too. Yep, share it with me right away. I'll, I'll use that as a demonstration, no problem. I hope it's not confidential data, Abhi. Uh, not really, I think it's something okay. I just go from some website. So I send it at me right away. I'll give it a try. <laughs> okay. I'll wait for it. So meanwhile, I'll get a, a spreadsheet from Abhi. I'll share one secret with you. How do I learn something on Excel that I don't know how to do it? Uh, okay. So, yeah, you share your screen. Okay. Yeah, now I'm sharing my screen. So let's say uh, uh, you want to find how do I ch check true or false condition with uh, how do I check two different condition under true and false? So go to Google, how to check multiple, or let's say, let's go with two condition. We did one, 
two conditions in Excel. So whenever you have question, type that question and write in Excel. So this word you see, it's the most critical when you try to find an answer that you don't know how to do it. So write a word in Excel, hit enter. You will see a lot of different information. Let's try the topmost link, what it's saying. And like mark my word, there will be someone in this world who has faced similar situation. And that person must have posted his or her idea on Google somewhere. So you will find the answer that is like 98% is the uh, success ratio with this method. So you'll see how to use Excel if function with multiple condition. So in summary, there can be two basic types of multiple condition and or logic. If function should be embedded and and or function in the logical test respectively. So you will see what is the significance of end function or or function. And you'll see the example with the some data screenshot here. So condition end B2, I'm not aware of how to use end and or, but you can see that if end C2 is, is greater and equal to 20 and D2 greater and equal to 30. If both conditions are true, write pass. If bo both conditions are false or any one condition is false, write fail. So you see here, then C2 is this 28. It's greater and equal than 20. So yes. It's 28 and the base number is 20, good. D2, is it greater than or equal to 30? Yes, our then score 32 and the base number is 30. So both conditions are true. So that's why uh, Excel printed pass. Now, uh, Frank failed both condition, 14 and 28. Both are less than 20 and 30. So it's failed. Let's say Colin. Colin is an interesting student. First 20, she said she had 13. So one condition failed, failed. You see second condition, it's pass. So it's pass. So that's still it's failed because it's end function. End, in end function, all the conditions should be satisfied to go to the uh, uh, true answer. Uh, so this is the one like you can use the other example. It is used or function and it's a mix of and or if or and then and then using multiple if statement in Excel. So you can see that you'll see that along if for satisfactory, poor, good, excellent, good, satisfactory, and poor. So you can get multiple results here. And he, here is the structure of the if statement. Let's say if you need to check, just compare two columns. So let's say someone asks you a question that I, I purchase uh, some cell phones on a purchase order. However, I did not receive the complete information. So your, your one column will have data, which is say it's uh, 20 iPhone 12 purchased. And the second column will have data, only 10 received. And let's say you have 2000 item. So how to compare two cells in Excel? So you'll see, uh, I just wrote a how to compare two cells. It says how to compare two cells, how to compare two cells in Excel with text, how to compare cells in Excel and change color, return a value, return to true and false. VBA using Java conditional formatting, it's, it's a bit advanced. So I would tell you to advise you to focus on a couple of first search results. Let's say 
how to compare two cells in Excel and change color. I would like to learn more about that. So how to change color if two cells are not equal to Excel. So this is something I'm looking for because I ordered 20 iPhones and I have received only, only 10. And there are like 10,000 orders across the US and Canada. So how do I check that order for iPhone? So click on that link you will see how to change color with the conditional formatting. I have used this for the like uh, the same scenario that I told you, uh, ordered item versus received item. So we had uh, like challenges with one supplier who used to send us uh, less nut and bolts than the order and saying that maybe those nut and bolts are lost in transit and it's uh, like a small product. So. It was easy to claim that statement. So I, I did a test scenario on almost 80,000 orders from last three years with that supplier to see how many we ordered and how many we received. And uh, so for, with that, I did the true false. And if the received nuts and bolts are less than the order nuts and bolts then i wanted to see what's the difference so i did the subtraction of those cells to understand that in three in last three years out of eighty thousand orders how many had the dispute if it is like almost every order then there is some thing is fishy if like couple of orders like two three orders out of eighty thousand, then uh, it's okay i don't want to hit hard my supplier so this is my trade secret. I use this Google a lot to type those kind of conditions and to understand whatever I'm looking for. And this is the keyword in Excel because there are other softwares such as uh, numbers in Apple, then Google Sheets. This software has also their own number of equations and number of functions to do it. Abhi, did you share the spreadsheet? Sri Obadina, do you have any question with yeah, the- Yeah, I think I found one that I can share. Just hold on a second. I'm gonna try to share it. I don't know if it's too big or what, but just hold on a second. I'm gonna give it a try. So I'll share these two links that I explained just for your reference, have a look at, try to understand by yourself and play with these different ideas. And if you ask my opinion, this is the best way to learn Excel is practice, practice, and try I, I to don't, figure I don't it out. I just shared one. Uh, where did you share? Um, on um, my WhatsApp. Yeah. Yep, I found it. I know one's about shipping, but I'll, I'll try another one to see if. Uh... Yep, no problem. I'll wait for it. Okay. Let me try another one. I can use this spreadsheet that you have shared with me. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is the file that is shared by Abhi. This looks pretty messy. And in real world, you will see this kind of files only when you are going to work in companies like Walmart or Amazon of the world. Uh, this, is the, how, this is how it looks like an, a data output from your systems, which you want to analyze. So first step first, which I love the most, is bold the titles. And so click the line one, 
click on this capital B, it will bold everything on that selected area. Then click on this small triangle, select all, go to short and filter, click there, click on filter. This is, you will see a, a filter. Now, let's see what this is data is saying. It says purchase order, country, managed by, shipment error. So let's say I would like to see uh, if it is shipped by air, I need an advance notice. So this is, let's say, J dash work. J dash advance notice. If start the bracket, check J2, if that is equal to inverted comma, I said whenever you want to compare or write any word, you need to use the inverted comma, A I R, finish inverted comma, that's my logical test. If it is true, I want to write, uh, urgent. And if it is non air shipment, I want to write not urgent. Finish inverted comma, finish the bracket and hit enter. I will highlight this column as orange. So I, I can keep an eye on the work that I'm doing. Now copy this equation and I would like to see with all the lines. So how many lines you have? Just copy, uh, like select everything. So we are at 6,000 line. Let's, let's limit here and paste. So you see, urgent, non-urgent, urgent, non-urgent. Non so this we are calculating only one test, which is if shipment is air or not. Now you can add a filter here, insert. So filter yeah, here and filter, oh, sorry. Filter and I can select only lines which are urgent and keep an eye on this purchase order lines. So you can select multiple condition using and and or with vendor name or pediatric or adult or HIV test or line item quantity, or line item value, or pack price. Anything you would look, like to add, you can use and and or condition, but I, I actually shared a link on how to use it and add as much as condition here. Like I have seen equation which has like a four or five line and it checks a checks lot of condition in data. So it all depends on what kind of data are you doing it. And for a beginner, I would, I would suggest to check one or two conditions. Don't go into like checking 20 or 30 different conditions. And once you feel comfortable with two or three conditions, you can start moving like four, six, eight, 10, 20 conditions. So are we good at uh, with if function here? And are we also good with the uh, relative references? Uh, I think uh, it's oh, pretty oh, clear. Yes. Um, I don't know if anybody has a question. Yes, all good. I'm good here as well. Um, 
good as well. Yeah. So Abhi, I have a, a 15, 20 minutes with me. And then after that, I have another call. So do you want me to go through the V? Uh, v can you, can you do a pivot for this one? Yeah, we look up and pivot table for this one. Yeah. Okay, great. So let yeah, me remove this. Up. Sorry. Now, what's the V look up? It's important if we can do that before you, um, before you attend to your other call. Okay, I'll show you both V look up and pivot table. Okay, so I'll, I'll remove this column which I have created. Now let's say this, are, this is our row data, all the first line titles, add the filters, and these two steps are optional. Like if you don't like to bold the first line and add the filters, you can do that, no problem. I always do that because when you have conversation with your stakeholder, like live conversation with stakeholder, there will be like a lot of question. Hey Jay, can you show me? subclass by adult so i can simply go into this filters and select whatever they are asking for the uh, demonstration as well as for the uh, conversation so it makes my my life easy if i do this first step like making bold the first line and adding filters now pivot table you see a small triangle click there go to insert tab Click on this option, pivot table. You can also use this recommended pivot table, but I, I never use it, I don't like it. But you see here, sum of line item by country. So Afghanistan, sum of line item by value. Then second option is sum of pack price by country. Sum of unit price, sum of line item insurance. You can use this if you want to use that. Like I'm not against of this function. It's just like uh, in last 10 years, I have never used recommended pivot table because it's always a different scenario asked by your different stakeholders. So when you click on this small triangle, it will select all the data. Now click on pivot table, select table range. If you feel that your table range is not A to G, a to AG, you can change it. If you want to see this only A to K, just you can select A to K and click on the pivot table and you will see AK. So I generally do it for whole data set just to see if I'm getting any new information over and above I was asked. So click on pivot table and just Keep the new worksheet, hit OK. Now, let's say, uh, let me find out a question. Uh, unit of measurement and OK. So I would like to see uh, by country. So this country, this is my country. By country, I would like to see how many uh, adult products or pediatric products or HIV test related products are ordered and what's the spend so far. So let's break this question into multiple small inf piece of information. So I would like to see data by country. So see here, Click on that country. It will go to automatically all rows. No problem, just hold on. Now I would like to see also by subclass based on that HIV taste product subclass. So if you don't find it here, that that title, if you forget, like, like me, I forgot what was the title of that, that particular data column. Go back here and see Oh, now I know that it's adult HIV test, pediatric, and the title name is subclassification. So I go back to here, click on subclassification. But now, do you see the challenge? The report will become too long, and I cannot compare 
apple to apple. So in this scenario, I will move this subclassification to columns. So now all the subclassifications are here, ACT, adult, HIV test, HIV test, ancillary, malaria, pediatric, and blank. It's by default in Excel, you will see either row or column, a blank word. No need to worry about it. And I would like to see the spend by category, by country. So now, my total spend for the line is under PEC price. So if you go here, sorry, line item value is my spend. PEC price is 29 and unit price is 97. So this, for this line, I have spent $551. So the title is line item value. And it's always better to check which, uh, which field to select for your, uh, for your analysis. So click on here. So beauty of the Excel is it scans number related fields and directly gives you summation of that number. But I don't know whether what's the, what what is what is going on here. Like, I can't read this number. I know it's for Botswana for adult subcategory, but what's the total? What's the spend? I'm not sure what's going on. Like, I can't read it with my first sight. Like, I need to understand. Okay, seven twenty one zero nine. Okay, one point one million dollar. So in this case, click on the small triangle here. You will see different option. Go to value fill settings. So you can do more things than the summation. You can do the counts, average, min and max product. But in supply chain, majority of the time you will see some. So I want to see in the dollar number and with comma, so I can easily speak it into the uh, Canadian currency language. Go to number, number format. Go to currency option under category. Do you want to see decimal points? Is it significance? Because all numbers will be in million dollar. Uh, no, I'm not interested. So remove decimals to zero. Symbol is dollar. And I would like to see that if spend is negative, then it should be into bracket and in red fonts. The rest everything should be in normal black fonts. Click OK. Again, click OK. So you see, as soon as we selected that currency, dollar, and uh, decimal points, you see decimal points are removed now. You will see that you have a comma at every three digit. So it's easy to speak that, hey, uh, for Haiti, uh, we have spent $1.4 million for the pediatric products. And so far, we have spent $43 million worth of products in Haiti. Let's say um, Pakistan. With Pakistan, we have spent $1.4 million just for HIV test related products and rest of the products are not sent to Pakistan. So your manager can ask you like, hey, can you give me the details about uh, a country, let's say Kenya, and what was the spend breakup by different product category, you can say, hey, Mr. Manager, my the total spend that we had was $33.9 million. Out of that, we have spent majority of behind HIV test related product. However, we have some spend in pediatric related product, very less spend for HIV ancillary test product and almost almost no spend for the added product. The interesting thing is that with Kenya, we did not spend anything for the ACT products and malaria products. And another thing with pivot table is uh, when you hover your mouse pointer somewhere, let's say in, on $5.46 million, it will give you an information that it's for Ethiopia for HIV test. You see this small pop-up? That's the, that's the information regarding that $5.4 million. So let's say you are pretty far and now you don't know which one, which product is which. 
just who were here. Okay, so Zimbabwe has spent $14 million worth of products, money, worth of dollars for the pediatric products. So this takes you the different conversation that, oh, Zimbabwe, why Zimbabwe has spent $14 million worth of pediatric products? Can you show me the breakup? That may be a question from your manager or from your colleague. So in this data set, you can go here. Now, the question was about Zimbabwe. So I told you to add filters in the first step. Go here, unselect everything. Select Zimbabwe, hit OK. Now, it, the question was more about $14 million, about pediatric products. So go to subclassification, select only pediatric, like unselect everything, hit OK. And you can tell that person that this is the breakup of $14 million. Refer column Y for the total. 